Hey everybody. So it's one thing for me to talk about the generosity culture and the way that it works, but it is a totally different thing for you to see for yourself the kind of impact that it can have in businesses. So I was thinking, keynote's over, interview's over, it's time for us to get cozy. I can make you a drink and tell you all about it. Got it set up here. You guys ready? I'm ready. Let's do it. All right, when I talk about the generosity culture, I'm always talking about pouring in to your people, your clients, and your community. So making a drink is a great analogy because I've got to pour in all the good stuff. So I talk about pouring in to your people. And a great example of this was a, a software company. And it's funny, I went and talked to everyone. And when I did, I found that there was a low-level employee who was super high confidence. And she actually knew more than anyone else in the company about everything they were doing. So much so that we decided we'd make her the director of operations. And she helped that software company scale in record time. And software companies scale for a living, but she made it exponentially faster. So the crazy thing is she had been there the whole time, two years. And no one had noticed how amazing she was. She was like a hidden gem. And the thing is, there's hidden gems in every organization. You just have to find them by pouring in. I was uh, working with some business coaches and they recommended uh, talking to her and I did and uh, the rest was history. Probably the best decision I've ever made. I think it was a great benefit because many people had been either A, at this company or at other companies and really had not been poured into. So, after you've been pouring into your people, you're also gonna to wanna to pour into your clients. And the reason is because you never know what you'll find. An example is a trucking company I worked with. They had a client that was their most troublesome client. They wanted more service than seemed reasonable, certainly for the trucking industry, but they wanted it because they themselves prided themselves on service. So what was so interesting is by giving them all of the service that they wanted, they were able to secure a relationship with that big customer that no one else had at a higher price and develop services that they had never had before that made them really competitive in the market. So my question for you is this, which one of your client problems is actually the biggest opportunity for your business? Her message of generosity and sharing and helping and providing information and really just trying to add value wherever you can. Through that, you build trust, you build relationship, and business grows from that foundation. It's in every area of the company, she was able to immediately make improvements in really less than a month. And that led to, over a period of time, uh, me actually getting the company to a position where I could sell it. The next step is pouring into your community. And you know, some of the most successful companies already do this so well. It's not just great for the community and the right thing to do, it's also great for employee retention because sometimes people are coming to work with you and they're looking for a sense of purpose. Giving back to the community gives them that sense of purpose and creates this great symbiotic relationship that only continues your success. And since we're talking about your success, Let's toast. Cheers. Oh yeah, that's good. She will make you feel like you have uh, thousands of people in the audience watching. You will make more money. You will have more clients. You will have higher retention rates. She's got the secret, I do believe. <laughs>